good afternoon. Chuck, take us away. Thank you, Robert. Robert, why is the uh, White House pressuring Democrats to back off from the Cantwell-McCain uh, attempt to bring back Glass-Steagall? Uh, I, I don't have anything on that. Why is it opposed okay. to Glass-Steagall? Is the White is it, House opposed to it? Well, I'm sorry? Is the White House opposed to reestablishing Glass-Steagall? I, I don't have any information on the amendment. I'm, I'm happy to look at it. Robert, in the uh, Iranian uh, uranium uh, statements today, is there anything at all that changes the administration's position, posture towards Iran on the uh, whole nuclear question? No, Chuck, because I, I think, um, look, I, I think with, let's look at the totality of what, uh, what this proposal is. Um, <clears throat> you certainly have my statement that uh, they're shipping their low enriched uranium out would be uh, would be a positive sign. That would be progress. Uh, but understand that uh, the proposal does not appear uh, to uh, address uh, Tehran's recent announcement of increasing its enrichment to 20 percent. A justification that was that the, the research reactor was used as the direct justification for doing so. That in and of itself. Uh, would make them non-compliant with their obligations and responsibilities. Um, first and foremost, we uh, this is a, a proposal should be submitted directly to the IAEA to evaluate, uh, fine print and all, um, so that the international community can uh, can take a look. Um, but it does not change uh, the steps that we are taking uh, to hold Iran uh, responsible. Uh, for its obligations, and those inc including sanctions. Or the timetable of those steps? None at all. Uh, any uh, any, has the White House heard back directly from Russia and China in terms of their commitment to keep going? I don't know if the White things? House directly has. I'm, I, I know that the that, that state has been in touch with, and certainly uh, I have no doubt that uh, uh, our representatives at the UN through the P5 plus 1 continue to work through this. Not concerned at this point that this is going to unravel the whole. Deal. No, again, I think there's, uh, as I said, I, I, there's certain steps that would certainly be progress. I think it is important to understand what this proposal signifies is less than what they agreed to last October. An understanding that the words and the deeds of the Iranian leadership rarely coincide. Um, so I think b before um, before we have a, uh, I think we have to get. The international community has to see the proposal in its detail as through the IEA before it can make a, a, a final determination. Yes, sir. President Medvedev has, asked, has suggested a small pause in the sanctions process. Turkish uh, Prime Minister Erdogan says there should be no <coughs> sanctions push at all. Are you saying there will be they'll, it's full speed ahead on sanctions, that you're not going to take time to, to hold off or ease the pressure for a swift passage of sanctions? No, we, we, we are continuing to work through the Security Council and through the P5 plus one, uh, as I said, to hold them accountable, not just for their words, but for their deeds, uh, a willingness to live up to their international obligations uh, or face consequences, including sanctions. Uh, well, I would point out that uh, Medvedev uh, also mentioned a, a concern about uh, the 20 percent enrichment. Again, done as a justification that the, the, uh, their unwillingness to accept uh, this last October, uh, that was used as justification for increasing enrichment. That in and of itself puts them in noncompliance. Has, has the President spoken directly to any, any world leaders or will he be speaking to leaders like Medvedev or, or, or President uh, Putin and coming uh, to the He, he, he talked with uh, Medvedev late last week, but uh, I am not aware of any calls that have been made today. No. And did the president uh, speak with leaders of Turkey or Brazil as this proposal was being put together? No, I, again, I believe the State Department has been uh, in contact with them, but I, uh, the president has not talked directly with them. Just the fact that, that Iran appears to be um, agreeing to something, even though you want more information to be sent to the IAEA, is this a step in the right direction? Well, again, I'm reticent to... Uh, well, even as I said, that <clears throat> if they were to make good on this and ship out 1,200 kilograms of low enriched uranium, yes, that would represent progress. But again, Dan, I think it is important to understand <clears throat> that this is less than 
this agreement is less or proposal is less than what they agreed to last October. And understand that even though they agreed to this last October, it never came to pass because they changed their mind. So uh, that's why I say the, the words and the deeds of the leadership in Iran have rarely coincided. Uh, so I, I think obviously uh, while shipping out their low enriched uranium would represent some progress, we still have concerns about the overall thrust of the nuclear program and certainly uh, the 20 percent enrichment is, uh, is something that, as, as I mentioned a minute ago, President Medvedev and others, uh, including us, share great concern about. On the black farmers, uh, John Boyd, who's the chief lobbyist, um, has expressed concerns about the pace of, of getting the black <coughs> they're owed. Uh, and he, his claim is that the administration, the president in particular, is, is slow in moving in this direction because this is a black issue. Um, it has to do with race. Is, is there any truth to that claim at all? Well, yeah, I think precisely because uh, this shouldn't have anything to do with race is exactly why the president uh, is involved in this issue. This is a, uh, a lawsuit that dates back to the late 1990s. It also includes, there's a separate case, the Cobell case, that includes Native Americans uh, who, who sought and were, uh, and, and uh, the case was settled uh, for discrimination against the Department of Agriculture dating back uh, many years. So the President's approach to this is not uh, is not based on the color of skin, but, but because of what is right. Why won't you get involved more so? We, we are very involved, April. We're, we're, this uh, uh, representatives have met with uh, the staffers that are working directly on this on, in, in the West Wing uh, in order to try to bring this to, uh, to an end. The reason why I ask why is he more involved, granted he put out a statement, a written statement showing strong support, but many have said that the president could have declared an emergency designation for the farmers to get their money. Well, and then you uh, again, I think, uh, uh, understand that, that if he had done that, that was objected to last week in the Senate. Right, but, he, but the way I understand it, Nancy Pelosi had said it early on that it could have happened. And this was... I, 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 that seems like hypothetical. And, and then this administration was supposed to come back to find something to attach the monies to. And the Congressional I, Black Caucus have still... April, I would say that's what the President and the team here continue to work on. Mm -hmm. Helen? What's the difference between your foreign policy and Bush's foreign policy? In what respect? In uh, what in, issue? In terms of uh, the rest of the world, Afghanistan and Iraq and so well, on. Well, in Afghanistan, we committed three times the number of troops that were there during the Bush administration because we believe that was the central front on the war on terror. You still think so? Yeah, absolutely. Eight, eight Americans killed on Saturday and so forth. We keep killing and dying there. No, I, I don't think there's any doubt that uh, <clears throat> Afghanistan and that region of the world present uh, the most significant danger uh, to our homeland in terms of the possible planning of attacks and the possible providing of a safe haven uh, if the Taliban were to become come back in control as they were uh, before 2001 and 9-11. Uh, well, you're in their country. <clears throat> I'm sorry? Who's the enemy when you invade a country? Well, again, uh, I think as you saw last week, uh, uh, we are working with a part in, in a partnership with uh, the government of Afghanistan uh, to secure an area uh, and ultimately turn it over to them to provide peace and security for their people. I have one other question. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't you know your position on blast steel in view of the economy? I, I, don't, I don't have any information on, on, on the amendment that might come up. Take care of all the bankers in the Treasury Department. Sorry? I said, why do they have such a dominance of bankers in the well, I, 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 I I think based on what the Treasury Department is doing on financial reform and the way that banks are fighting us, I'm not sure that the two, I'm not sure that statement actually lines up with what's going on in terms of, uh, of financial reform right now. Chip. Thank you, Thank you Robert. On uh, the oil spill, it's kind of a good, good news, bad news day. The good news is that they did get a pipe down and they're siphoning <coughs> off what they estimate to be, to be about one-fifth of the oil. But right. the bad news is that on BP, well, there's plenty of bad news, but <coughs> one piece of bad news is that uh, BP refineries, are according to a uh, report by the Center for Public Integrity, two BP refineries are responsible for well over 90 percent, 97 percent, according to one uh, statistic of all flagrant safety violations in the United States over the last three years. And the question is, 
does the president still have confidence in BP and should he? Well, uh, look, I, I'd have to take a look at the particular report. Uh, I've not, Chip, looked deeply into uh, penalties for refining. Uh, I would say there's no doubt that, uh, as you heard the president talk about on Friday, there are failings of, there have been failings of, uh, of corporations and companies, Transocean, Halliburton, and BP, uh, all pointing fingers at each other. Um, and walking away from the responsibility that must be taken in this instance. Uh, but there's no doubt there's been a failing of government in, uh, in a regulatory approach, um, which is one of the reasons why Secretary Salazar uh, began reform at, uh, at MMS uh, when he took over, and that's why uh, the President and Secretary Salazar uh, agree that uh, this department should be split, that we should have um, a regulatory approach for safety and inspections that doesn't coincide with uh, drilling permits and royalty checks. In that statement on Friday, the president, of course, denounced all the finger pointing, but then he seemed to point the finger at the Bush administration, saying that over the last decade or more, that it's, uh, as, as you said, problems well, Chip, with the government. The last decade or more includes us. So I, I don't, so I mean, he I. He was I, pointing I, the finger at himself, at his own administration, too. Chip, we, we I think the, the president was clear that uh, there have been failings at a government level, and certainly uh, those include us, but I. I uh, my guess is you guys did some stories uh, in the previous decade on uh, what was going on at MMS, which is what caused Secretary Salazar when he came in uh, to begin reforming that. Right. Yes. That's what the president did in his statement. He pointed the finger <clears throat> at, uh, uh, at the last 10 years, but then said ever since we came into office, Secretary Salazar well, has Secretary been trying Salazar, to change this, as though this administration was not part of the no, problem I, at all. I, I, I think I just was pretty clear on that. I don't think there is any doubt, though, Chip, that Again, I, I don't, don't have a story log in front of me, but my guess is that your network and others did stories on MMS, which is what caused, uh, which is what caused Secretary Salazar to begin that reform upon taking office in 2009. One other question on a different topic. You have a, a, another uh, state dinner uh, this week. Is the White House confident that all procedures have been uh, corrected, changed, whatever needs to be done to make sure you don't have the kind of security problem you had last time? We are. We are. Could you elaborate what has been uh, I'm not going to elaborate on increased security procedures. That would be, uh, that would, uh, that would invite people to try to figure out how to evade them. Uh, going back on the BP, there's a Washington Post is just reporting that a top official in MMS has announced his retirement as of May 31st. Is this a firing or is this a reinforced Chip, retirement? I'm sorry, Chuck. I don't. Uh, you don't know anything about this. I, I don't. Uh, I don't. No, but you I don't. Guys, again, with, so I don't have my BlackBerry. I, no, I understand Got to change that somehow, though, because uh, whenever you guys are asking questions off of your BlackBerry, I know it's something that I am. But this uh, is an administration decision. This is a senior person. Let me check on it. I will. I will check on it uh, as soon as I uh, either get a BlackBerry up here or get. Uh, Get off of here. That's the last thing you need. Yeah, can you imagine? I'll be honest. We'll right. take a vote. We don't want you to have a black break there. Let Bill be the black break. They have a brick breaker up Ice. here, so I don't. <laughs> How does that work? If that appears in the high score, just what about Bill's crossword. Well. Uh, can <clears throat> is it? Can can the government? At what point do you think the government is going to be able to? know how much oil has been spilled. BP clearly doesn't have the answer. Scientists are telling us one thing. I mean, where are you guys getting your information about how much oil has been spilled? Well, uh, look, I, NOAA does projections uh, on a whole host of, um, look, off obviously of satellite imagery on what's come up. We, we know through the use of subsea dispersants that NOAA is also <clears throat> investigating um, the degree to which we may have oil underneath the surface. Uh, and I know there's been reporting on that today. Um, I think as the president said on Friday, our, uh, and, and I think that uh, Admiral Allen uh, said on Friday as well, that our response was for a catastrophic event. So um, there's not a, th let's just say this, we did not employ a 5,000 barrel a day response for a 10,000 barrel a day accident. It's, uh, it has been, uh, always been predicated on 
what he said was a catastrophic event. As you guys are skimming this oil, and I know that there is mm -hmm. some skimming, where is it going? Uh, I know that there, um, I know certainly that what is being vacuumed up uh, from the insertion tube is, goes on to a tanker, uh, and I assume that that tanker uh, and the skimming goes into, when they, they've collected, I don't know how many million gallons of oil and water mix, that that goes to, uh, uh, that goes to a port and that, that that is separated. Tomorrow's elections in, uh, in four states. Do you see any, do you accept the fact that any of them have some bearing to uh, the president's political standing, his agenda, and, and things like that? Well, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, I assume, get a chance on either later on Tuesday or on Wednesday to talk. I mean, I, I hate to sort of do the, what, well, is it, mean, what does it mean? I'll, I'll be honest, that says that you're waiting to see what the results are to tell us what it means. Well, it's so going to be hard to tell you what it means until I know the results. I mean, I'm, uh, trust me, even if they give me a BlackBerry, it's unlikely to tell me who, what happens on Tuesday before the... Uh, but, that, but that says something, obviously, if they go one way. Yes, a uh, referendum on the president. He's done well with Democrats. Well, Chuck, if you're asking I mean, me to... Do you think it's fair that these Democratic well, do you think primaries, think it would be specifically fair for me in Arkansas and Pennsylvania... What value would you give my opinion if I told you what it meant right now if it didn't actually correlate with the result? But is it... You, is it I mean, I, I say, hate to be picky about no, how to. Have you on the record before it happened? <laughs> no, right, exactly. no, it's not about. But the president, I feel like is I'm, it fair to say the president? The president, I mean, he's endorsed the two incumbents, yes. Senator Lincoln and Senator Specter. Right. Uh, Look, I, say so. What does it say about the president if one of them loses, or if one or both? Well, of them again, I, I, let, let's. Uh, I'm happy to talk about the results when they happen. Obviously, I don't think it's breaking news to say that uh, uh, this is a. Uh, this has been, based on the election results that we do know, it's been a <laughs> tough year for incumbents. Um, everyone noticed that uh, a senator from Utah reelected just six years ago with 70 percent of the vote got a quarter of the convention vote to be renominated. Uh, we will get a chance to look at a whole host of primaries tomorrow. Um, and my guess is, you know, look, you've got interesting races. Uh, in places like Kentucky as well. So again, I'm, I'm happy to spend some time on, like I said, either Tuesday night if we, uh, uh, when we get results or, or Wednesday uh, talking about what they mean. Just very quickly, the President and Vice President are both traveling tomorrow, both yeah. going to be in swing states, but neither one of them is going to be in Pennsylvania. Anything to read into that? Uh, the President's in Ohio, Ohio. we're talking President. about the economy. Vice President's going to be in Iowa. Uh, I, I mean, I, look, I, I think we've, we've, uh, uh, for both in Pennsylvania and Arkansas, done quite a bit for each candidate. How, how closely has the president been following these campaigns? Not that closely. A couple of timing questions. At yep. one point, you had said that, uh, that well, the deadline at one point for, for Iran was the end of last year. Um, we were going to see sanctions no, in no, no. this spring. Right, yeah. I, I think, just in fairness, I think that, uh, uh, I, I think, as to your first point, uh, our government and the governments of those involved in the P5 plus one said that uh, Iran had a year-end deadline to change its behavior, yes. Okay. Um, and then you said uh, fairly recently that you thought that the sanctions could be uh, moving by the end of, by, by spring. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure when you're defining spring, but uh, could you give us a sense? Well, when do you define spring? <laughs> no. I kind of think end of May. But, Walk outside um, right now and tell me it's the middle of summer. <laughs> I, I, no, but so either, it's about 60 degrees out there. Are you so still I'm, aiming for roughly yeah, no, the I, end of May or something like that? I, I, I would, uh, uh, again, not to get cute with. Uh, uh, when spring starts, but uh, I think we are making steady progress uh, on a sanctions resolution, yes. Okay, and the other, the other um, timing issue was on financial regulation. Uh, at one point, the President hoped, hoped to get a bill to his desk by, by Memorial Day. Uh, is that still realistic? Or what's well, I, I, look, I think, uh, I think there's some reason to believe that the Senate will conclude its business this week. Uh, we're hopeful, and uh, I think the bill, uh, the, the bill is a, a very strong piece of legislation in changing the rules uh, that govern our financial system. Uh, obviously, the next steps will be working through uh, those differences with the House, and I think we'll have a bill uh, to the President's desk uh, somewhat shortly. Somewhat shortly yeah. by July 4th? Uh, that sounds about right. Uh, Robert, uh, 
Christy Romer yesterday uh, said that there was more to do in terms of jobs and stuff like that. Is that going to be the president's message in Youngstown tomorrow? Is that going to be the main message? Uh, well, the president's going to certainly going to talk about the economic recovery. I think we're going to speak specifically about a business that, uh, through an investment in, uh, through an investment by uh, the Recovery Act, <coughs> excuse me, is uh, is greatly expanding its business and is going to hire uh, several hundred people. Uh, I think what Dr. Romer spoke about were uh, many of the things that the president continues to believe need to happen. Uh, sending legislation to Capitol Hill to increase small business lending. Um, the uh, housing retrofit plan uh, that will help create jobs. All of those things um, uh, the president believes and the economic team believe uh, still need to happen even as our economy uh, improves and is on a positive trajectory. Is there anything else, anything else new, though? Uh, uh, I don't think that, it, uh, that he's going to talk about it tomorrow, no. Well, New York Federal Reserve says the pace of the recovery may be slowing, cites a couple of stats. Does that trouble you? Does the President uh, intend to act based on that? Uh, I, I, Wendell, not familiar with what the New York Fed specifically has said. I think the President was pretty clear the other day that if uh, if you want a job and don't have one, then there's still a recession going on. Um, again, we've uh, we have seen three quarters of economic growth, uh, positive economic growth, um, for the first time in more than a year. Uh, that economic growth for the first time in more than a year. We've seen four consecutive jobs reports that show uh, positive job growth and the largest. Uh, job growth in more than four years and the largest job growth in manufacturing in more than 10. So, look, we are, today is, uh, you know, next month's economy will be stronger than this month's. Uh, this year's economy is stronger than last year's economy. So uh, we're continuing to make progress. And again, I, I think the President is concerned, Wendell, each and every day uh, about, uh, about our recovery and about the strength of our economy. And on the, the primaries in Arkansas and, and, and Pennsylvania in particular, uh, is the president, does he have <coughs> less a stake in these primaries than he did, say, in, in, in uh, the races in New Jersey, Virginia, Massachusetts, uh, uh, that everyone wanted to make a referendum on him? Is he less an issue in, in, uh, in Blanche Lincoln's race, less an issue in the I, I mean, Sestak Arlen Specter race? I mean, I don't. I don't think either. I don't think in either one of those races. The, uh, uh, I mean, obviously we've appeared in commercials, but I don't think that's been a, uh, a political. I don't think the two sides have argued about that, uh, uh, per se. Again, we, we'll have a chance to talk about uh, uh, the results and the outcomes and what they may or may not mean. I'm, I'm sensing, be before the the races um, last year. Uh, sense the kind of adamant White House uh, insistence that the president was not an issue here, and you don't seem to be arguing that strongly this time. I, I don't, I, I, maybe I'm not that, following you. That, uh, I just, I guess, I just, I have to, <laughs> it's just hard for me to tell you what the results of Tuesday mean on Monday. Uh, it's, you know, I can't tell you how the NBA finals are going to go and why, so just because the they really haven't happened. Tell you what the results mean as, as to try and get a sense of whether the president feels he's got something to gain or lose. Uh, in well, look, that. Wendell, I think everyone knows that, uh, that we've supported, who we support in those two races. Again, uh, uh, we, su we have supported uh, incumbent Democratic senators, uh, and uh, we've done a lot on behalf of each campaign. Again, there, there are races all over the country uh, that we'll have a chance to look at from the Democratic and the Republican side uh, as to what it means. Well, you want to handicap the, the uh, Kentucky race then, if you won't do the... Uh, no, but I'm, uh, I, I, I'm looking forward to the results and the analysis of that just as much as... Uh, what about the NBA just as much as everybody else. <laughs> That's, uh, hold on, let me get my... I'm sorry, nothing on that. Go ahead. Um, first, I'd like to <clears throat> encourage you to follow on Chuck to find out something about this resignation of the MMS official when you can. Do you want me to go now? Well, no. no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Would you defer your question time for me to go find that out? I, I, I will as soon as I, uh, as soon as I get. Uh, um, and then um, uh, on West Point at the end of the week, do you have some sense yet whether that's a speech that's likely to produce 
something other than a typical graduation speech? Yeah, I, mean, is it, is it I, I do, but I, I don't have, uh, um, not at a point where, uh, we'll get into that, I guess, a little bit later in the week, I should say. Thank you. Robert, uh, uh, McClatchy has a story out of Kandahar saying that key military operations have been delayed until fall and that NATO officials who once spoke of demonstrating major progress by mid-August now say the turning point might not be until November. Uh, I, do you have anything about No, that? I, I haven't seen that, uh, uh, Peter. I, I, uh, and I think um, General McChrystal briefed at the Pentagon on this. This is not a um, – the notion of major military operations, I'd have to see exactly what the writer means about that. This is not going to – as General McChrystal, I think, said in the, at the Pentagon briefing and certainly has said in the Situation Room meetings, this is not going to look like a, the Battle of Fallujah. This is not going to have um, uh, rushing across the field in a D-Day type moment. Uh, and in, 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 in some instances, Peter, those operations around and in Kandahar have already begun. Uh, and I, I've heard General McChrystal say that this is something um, – this is an operation that is uh, – uh, likely to dominate our focus through the end of the year. So the notion of, of August or, or I, I forget, was August or the fall, um, I, I think in many ways would be, uh, would be a false deadline in the sense that we've, again, this is, uh, uh, this is something that is, is going to take some time and last through the duration of the year. President Karzai, when he was here, asked where the president agree to any changes in that timetable? None that I'm aware of, but I, I, I will double check with, uh, with a few people. Yes. Thank you, Robert. During the campaign, the President was highly critical of Halliburton and the process of no-bid contracts. His exact quotes were? Well, I, I know the quotes. What? I know the quotes. You know the yeah. quotes? Yeah. All right. What's the administration's reaction to the news that Halliburton has just been given a $568 million no-bid contract by the administration. Uh, on, on what issue? Uh, not sure yet what that was. All right, let, we'll, <laughs> we'll, how about we reconnoiter on both of that and we'll, uh, Robert, we'll figure that Robert, out. Robert, uh, Do you have another? Uh, no. Um, well, yes. One of the things <laughs> You will give me an answer on that when I give when I find the reports on what it was exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, we'll meet somewhere in the middle on that. All right. One. Yes, I will. Uh, I will find that one out. I was going to ask you about. Um, you didn't discuss in talking about the primaries Pennsylvania's 12th district, which is a special election, not a primary tomorrow. Uh, you said the president is not, you know, following very closely the campaigns. Is he aware of the Democratic nominee? ran against the health care program and yes. said he would have voted against that. Uh, I don't know if he's directly aware. I mean, obviously, uh, I've, I've certainly seen those reports, sure. Okay. Robert, just two questions. Go ahead. Only two. Uh, the New York Times mm. reported <clears throat> that, quote, Democrats said the White House is not eager to be embarrassed by having the president make a last-minute visit on behalf of a candidate who goes on to lose, as happened in the Massachusetts Senate and New Jersey governor's races, end of quote. And my question, is that the reason the president has not campaigned for Senator Specter this month? Uh, well, I don't think that, I, I doubt the New York Times reported Democrats is, but I, I'm going to check on, I, I, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to, I'm going right, to, I, I don't know if Peter wrote that, but I'm, I'm going to, uh, I, I wrote that down on, right, exactly, I struggle the same way. Um, uh, the, the president, uh, as I answered last week, uh, had, had not, did not have plans to return to, uh, to Pennsylvania. Okay, why does the president believe Democrats that the people who wrote the Obama health care bill were justified in exempting themselves from it? Well, I think you've, you've heard the president discuss, uh, and I think we've pledged uh, to put the president uh, into his own plan. So uh, I think that's been dealt with. Hard. Um, quickly, any reaction to apparently an immigration court in Ohio has just granted asylum to the president's aunt? This is, uh, this is an issue I think that first came up um, some, at some point during the campaign. Uh, the president was clear that uh, this is an issue that is uh, that he was not aware of and should be dealt with um, through the necessary legal proceedings. Uh, you, you're you're telling me uh, for the first time uh, what the decision is. We had no involvement in that, and uh, that's something that uh, uh, that we've always uh, said should be dealt with through the normal course of how these cases are determined. And then looking ahead to the Ohio trip tomorrow, 
there have been several of these White House to Main Street trips at this mm -hmm. point. And I wonder whether you have any measure of whether the President's project to sell his economic policies to the American people has been successful through these trips. Well, look, I think, uh, um, I think more and more people, because of the uh, economic news, are feeling more optimistic about the direction of the economy. Uh, I, think, uh, I, I think that's both a, a result of, uh, well, I think it's primarily a result of the fact that, as I said earlier, three consecutive quarters of economic growth, four consecutive months of positive job growth, um, some, of which is a, uh, some of which is because of the actions that the President took on the Recovery Act. Robert, Eric Cooler came under fire last week for not having read the Arizona immigration law. And knowing that the President clearly shares some strong views on that issue, I'm wondering, has he read the law? Uh, I will check. I believe he, uh, I believe in the very, when we were first discussing this, uh, he asked counsel to provide him some information on that. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Um, as far as the uh, CMS nominee, uh, you, you mentioned this last week, but uh, um, uh, just as recently as last summer, he had said that, quote, the decision uh, is not whether we will ration care, the decision is whether we will ration care with our eyes open. Uh, since part of part of the selling point on the health care reform was that it is not rationing. What, what were the circumstances, though, which he's talking about that law, about <laughs> which he's talking about that quote? Uh, and he, he, he wasn't speaking directly of the health care reform. Right, but I'm, I'm suggesting what are the circumstances, if it wasn't about the law that you're asking me about, what were the circumstances around that quote that he was speaking about? I, I think he might. <laughs> I, well, you could get with, uh, you guys can, yeah, and then we'll, go ahead. Uh, Robert, the administration has emphasized its desire for BP to fully reimburse costs yeah. beyond the yeah. amount. There was a letter to that effect. BP right. has written back. Right. Um, I, I want to ask you, um, I understand why you push for it. Are you entirely confident that BP will, is good for whatever you guys say the money is? And, yeah. and what are you prepared to do beyond letters to? Well, Does uh, case law support you? Right, Margaret, first and foremost, obviously, we, the, the letter sent by Secretaries Salazar and, and Napolitano uh, late, late last week uh, and reported on on Saturday, uh, obviously was an attempt to understand uh, the degree to which of the responsibility that they're uh, that they've said they will take uh, and which we believe they should take. Um, we're evaluating the response to their letter um, from a legal perspective and understanding that we have asked for in legislation that the $75 million economic damages cap be lifted uh, retroactively uh, to ensure that the Oil Pollution Act uh, covers uh, the type of damage that is obviously happening as a result of this spill, uh, and that taxpayers, as the President has said numerous times, including last Friday, are not on the hook for the damages caused by BP or uh, Transocean or Halliburton as a result of, uh, of this damage. Does case law support the likelihood that they'll be good, good for the money, whatever you say? Well, again, we're, we're, Mark, we're evaluating their response to ensure that uh, that they that they will do all that is necessary. Well, what would the next step be if you don't think? Well, let right? me have them evaluate that, and we'll have some uh, we'll, we'll have an update on that. Question. Yes. Well, <clears throat> one of the arguments that you're hearing from the Republican <clears throat> leadership is that if you raise the liability, it's going to effectively eliminate the possibility that smaller oil shops can drill offshore. And I'm wondering if there is a way response to that. Uh, are you essentially creating a system that only benefits big oil companies now? No, but I, I Sam, I think somebody has to understand that if. Um, uh, if the project that you're undertaking has the potential to cause the type of damage that exceeds uh, what is what could or may happen, uh, that the law take that into account regardless of the size of your firm. Um, I think if uh, uh, I think that's quite frankly some, uh, a series of of steps based on common sense to ensure that. The protections are there for people uh, in the event that something catastrophic does happen. So how are you going to move this legislatively forward? It looks like you're at an impasse right now. Uh, well, obviously there was an objection last week. Uh, I think that was, um, uh, and I think the administration believes uh, that that was, um, uh, that Senator Murkowski was wrong in objecting to that. Uh, and the only possible way to move forward uh, is to ensure, again, that there are uh, 
a series of protections uh, to take into account uh, the potential size of a catastrophe. April. Um, I want to find out about two White House topics um, <coughs> and two White House conversations on these topics. One, um, on Halliburton. Um, what is the White House, what is the conversation with the White House and Halliburton officials as it relates to the oil spill? We've heard the President say uh, he was very upset and frustrated about what um, was said on Capitol Hill. Everybody's pointing fingers at one another and not wanting to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. What is the conversation from this White House with Halliburton right now as they are partly responsible yeah. for what's happening? I, I, I can check the degree to which counsel or, or um, or Carol or others are dealing directly with Halliburton. Obviously, the letter on Friday uh, dealt primarily with uh, with British Petroleum. Right. So, are you saying there are conversations with Halliburton? Well, that's what I said. I would check on. Okay. And also, um, another conversation. Could you talk to me? Give me a little TikTok um, this weekend about this White House's efforts in trying to bring in the civil rights community as it relates to Elena Kagan when there were questions uh, as late as Friday about her record on affirmative action. And now we're hearing that the NAACP is on board. And we understand that the White House made some outreach calls. Well, I think they, not just on board, I think they endorsed the nomination. They did, of, they did endorse, right. yes, yes. Well, that's on board. Well, okay, you say tomato, I say tomato. But, um, but the bottom line is, could you talk to me about what the White House gave to these um, civil rights organizations so they could come on board? Because there was a dearth yeah. of information from this White House to them, and they well, were very concerned. Well, I don't know if, uh, I, I, I can't speak to, uh, uh, let me just say this, April. Obviously, uh, what we shared with, uh, with uh, that organization, what we'd share with any organization, is her record on these issues. I, I think they're... Um, Look, I, I think we saw it on the we saw it on the Sunday talk shows. There's, there's, uh, I don't know whether it's a dearth of information or a dearth of understanding, but we're happy to provide information uh, on what the facts are. I think that's what. Wait a minute! 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 Wait the slow picture. Well, you know, I, uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm from the South. We do things a little slower, Lynn. So just uh, buckle your seatbelt and just hold on. Um, the, I, she interrupted me. Just let the record reflect that it's harder to, the, you delay the wind up, it's harder to deliver the pitch. Yeah. I, I've been dealing with that same frustration for seven years. Um, <laughs> Uh, the um, <laughs> thank you, Mr. I was, uh, he, he's my he's the sidekick. The um, uh, no, but we, we provided information. Uh, I, I'm I'm happy to get Josh and others to talk to you all about the process by which they contacted board members that would be voting in uh, uh, and and weighing in on an endorsement for uh, our solicitor general to be the next Supreme Court justice. Okay. Just as uh, we've shared information. Uh, via the blog and other places about her record on a whole host of other issues, some of which was misunderstood, like uh, many comments that you heard over the weekend that were inaccurate about uh, her involvement on the military. Okay, well, many of these civil rights leaders have come to this White House and had conversations, and they felt that was the time to have all of her civil rights and affirmative action uh, letters or what have you uh, laid out to them. And, they, and many of them said that it would, they laid the blame on this White House for the delay in their endorsement. What say you to that? Well, I, I, I can't speak of any delay about the endorsement. Look, the White House has, uh, over the weekend, April, asked that the Clinton Library um, uh, speed up the production and the release of 160,000 pages of documents uh, from her service at the White House, uh, letters, writings, emails, uh, and, as well as um, the release of uh, papers that she wrote at both Princeton and Oxford, despite the fact that they uh, haven't been asked for by the committee. And what do you say to the fact that she was one of the ones who was in the Clinton administration at the time, who was fighting against the president putting out more of a civil rights agenda that had more teeth. She wanted. To, she was one of the ones who wanted to water it, wear it down. Uh, back then, there was a big fight of factions over race, and she was one of the ones yeah. allegedly wanted I, to. I to think tone that it the down. documents will show that uh, uh, she's a strong uh, supporter of civil rights. This is a. Uh, she's a clerk for. She was a clerk for Thurgood Marshall. But that's a 
She works for Eric symbol? Holder, and she was nominated by Barack Obama. But some people uh, say I that's think that symbolism. Well, they have said that might be symbolism well, versus I don't, I don't, substance. I don't think the NAACP would would endorse on symbolism rather than substance. I think they would endorse. Uh, based on the fact that she has a very strong record on these issues. She has a strong record on these issues as a Solicitor General. Uh, and that's why she's pleased to enjoy their support, Tommy. Thanks, Robert. Uh, I have two questions, but I kind of do one follow-up first. Is that okay? Follow-up to your question it's or to somebody else? Chuck's question uh, about the state dinner. Uh, can you say whether there's going to be... Chip's question, I think. Was it? Okay. Uh, can you say whether Six there's going to be... Hey, uh, yeah, we are. <laughs> another crazy, another good looking TV guy. Yeah, <laughs> so all those TV, yeah, right? all those TV guys look alike. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. Can you say whether there's going to be a representative from the uh, the secretary, the social secretary's office? Uh, uh, let me check point? on the procedure. My understanding is there will be. Uh, and my, my first question is: uh, Yesterday, uh, Greg Craig said that uh, Elena Kagan is a progressive in the mold of Barack Obama. Uh, is that something the White House agrees with, and is that going to be? Well, I think the Ron Klain, in, in, when describing uh, uh, describing her judi judicial, uh, well, describing her political beliefs, put her on the progressive side. Yes. So, I mean, is that going to be the White House's strategy going forward? To, well, to I, think, I don't. I don't think it's a strategy as much as it is a belief, and uh, that's where she is. My, my second question: um, there, Do you have any on that? There's a, a new book that's quoting someone from the White House on Rush Limbaugh. Uh, Telling him what he can do, do with himself. Have you, have you You're gonna have to be more specific. What do you? You guys are. You guys are just. Well, this is. Uh, There's a book quoting. There's a book our colleague on talk radio. I'm just, just asking to be more specific. I don't know why you think I'm disparaging. There's a, there's a book quoting um, a, a senior White House official uh, responding to an invitation to golf with Rush Limbaugh by saying that uh, Limbaugh can play with himself. And uh, there's some that have speculated that the source of that quote was the president via an aide. I'm wondering if you can... I, I, I don't know the answer to that. Lynn, do you have... Has, you the, were... has the president ever said anything like that in your... Not that I, not, not <coughs> in my presence, no. Lynn, do you have... Thank you for that. It's very nice of you. I know that too. I, I know the. Uh, I'm, that's a slow wind up as well. Go ahead. <laughs> Just to get back to April's yeah. question, I think it would be that the question is not so much that overview that you gave, but simply who met with who, when, and called, yeah. who had meetings. Uh, I think Valerie Jarrett had one meeting, I believe. That's what I think. Right. I think Valerie met with people. More. I think. Uh, so that's Eric Holder. Uh, let, let me find out from Josh. I know Mike Stradmanis. Uh, really? Talked with people. Uh, okay. I'm sure uh, Eric Holder, who's, uh, as you know, uh, her boss at the Department of Justice. Uh, I'm sure either talked to her or would be happy to talk to anybody about uh, about her record. Did the president get on the phone? Not that I'm aware of. No. So, do you think there's more than that that were involved in the application? Uh, let me check with Josh. Okay. Let me just Thank check you. with Josh. David. Uh, thanks, Robert. Last October, you said that in terms of Afghanistan. We needed to work with a partner that was, quote, free of corruption and transparent. Mm -hmm. Given all the conversations that happened last week, including the one between President Obama and President Karzai, how close do you think uh, the Afghan government is to the standard that you set back in October, being Good. free of corruption and well, transparent? Uh, obviously, uh, David, we've, uh, uh, we've got progress that needs to be made. Uh, I outlined steps that uh, that the government had taken last week prior to the visit, whether it was on the Electoral Complaints Commission, whether it was on um, laws on subnational government, uh, whether it was uh, uh, on the High Office of Corruption, that there had been steps that had been taken, and we were watching the implementation of those steps to ensure increased uh, transparency, increased um, accountability, as well as the promotion of uh, fair and transparent parliamentary elections, which uh, are upcoming. Now, a lot of people who have been to Afghanistan recently talk about corruption in historic terms. That, that people there, if they say their parents and their grandparents who are used to a certain level, find what's going on now completely unbelievable. It's almost hyper-corruption. You have to pay to pay your taxes. Um, so do you think on the ground, people, Afghans, are seeing any change in terms of corruption? Well, I'm not sure I'm the person to talk about what Afghans are seeing on the ground. 
again, I, I think I would simply impart what we have seen uh, and what uh, some of the steps that we've asked uh, the government of Afghanistan to take uh, in terms of making those steps. I guess uh, the question is, is that sufficient? No, I don't. I, 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 look, I, I, I think there's no, no doubt that we have, we will continue to work with uh, and move them in a direction uh, that we think is in uh, everybody's interest. I'll take Bill and then I'll, uh, yes, sir. Robert, the, um, we talked about this a little last week, but the bar was raised yesterday by Senator Jeff Sessions, who said that when she was dean at Harvard that uh, Elena Kagan actually broke the law by not allowing the military on campus. Has the White House researched that? The White House Council is confident that she's... Uh, I, I don't think the, the White House Council had to research that. The, there's... Uh, uh, I don't think anybody's brought anything that's, that would say that she's uh, ever been in violation of the law. I think, um, I think last week the former dean of the Harvard Law School uh, wrote about the series of events that happened. Um, military recruiters were never barred from the campus. Uh, they were not afforded access to the Office of Career Services, but had access to students through uh, the Veterans Organization. Military recruitment for the semester that is uh, being looked at actually increased from the prior semesters. Um, uh, I, I think last week Senator Scott Brown spoke pretty eloquently about uh, uh, the notion that um, Elena Kagan was a friend of the military, and I think. Uh, uh, to quote the Dean of West Point, it is uh, ludicrous for anyone to accuse her of being, uh, of being anti-military. So I, I, again, I, I, think if, uh, I think if one actually looks at the facts in the record, they see, uh, they see the truth. Thank you.